Thank you for standing by and welcome to the Cochlear Limited announcement. All participants are in a listen only mode. There will be a presentation followed by a question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, you will need to press the star key followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Dig Howitt, CEO and President of Cochlear. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining the call. I certainly didn't expect to be back on a call with you again uh, today after yesterday's, um, but we have had this appeal decision overnight and I wanted just to run through that uh, briefly and then open up for questions. Uh, so, so the Court of Appeals um, has affirmed the District Court award uh, so for the 268 million US dollars. Um, we, there is another step that we will take, which is an on-bank review uh, to petition for a rehearing. Um, we anticipate that that will take a few months. We had, as uh, we have previously said, had uh, bank line facilities in place uh, for this judgment, so we will now call on those facilities. There is still... Um, a decision pending on pre-judgment interest and uh, costs from uh, from this case, and that is back in the district court. Um, and we expect that that will take a few months before there's any um, movement there. But, but uh, that's out of our hands on the timing. Uh, importantly, as we said many times, the patents that are the subject of this case have long expired. So this is an issue of uh, cash rather than an issue of our uh, ongoing ability to sell or uh, any royalty on our uh, future sales. Uh, and we do remain confident that we can continue to meet our cash requirements. So while we didn't expect, I didn't expect that we'd be on a call today as we put our cash flows together uh, in light of COVID-19, we did include this outcome. Uh, in projecting the cash uh, that, that we would need. So from the perspective of our cash requirement uh, and outlook, nothing has changed from yesterday. So I think I will stop there. I think the, the announcement is pretty straightforward. Uh, open it up to any questions that people have. Thank you. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press star 2. If you are on a speakerphone, please pick up the handset to ask your question. Your first question comes from David Lowe from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Thanks very much. Um, morning, Dick. A um, couple of questions. Um, the timing of any payment, so when do you expect that, I mean, you've talked about this process taking a few months in terms of asking for this petition. Yeah. Would you have to wait until after that? Are you required to pay before? Yeah, so, so we've got a we've got uh, this process of the on bank on bank review uh, will take a few months, um, so we don't have to make a payment until after that review. And if we're successful with that review, then that would uh, change things. And we already got the committed facility. Right. I see the comment there that the bond value of the bond will come back. What sort of value is that? The, bond, the bond's not in on the balance sheet. The, the, bond's, the, the bond was for the full amount, and yeah. it sits there. Um, we, have, we haven't forked out the cash or anything. It was, the bond was provided based on our cash flows. So, yeah, so, that, so there's a bond in place, um, and yep. then we, at the point we pay, that bond's retired and we pay out the cash. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, the other one is just on the interest calculation. Yeah. Um, what are the variables at play there? So, I mean, the 123 million has been uh, is in dispute. W yep. What's the range of possibilities of that? Uh, look, I, I think the range there is um, zero to 123. Now, we, we, our argument is that uh, adva uh, the AMF admissed um, didn't lodge that appeal properly or at the right time. Uh, we think, uh, secondly, the calculation method is flawed, um, and that's what's in front of the court. Right. If the method was chosen, I mean, let's put aside the timing one. If the method was flawed, I mean, I, I take it that comes down to the rate that, that applies. Yep. So, okay. 
Yeah. All right. Um, look, the, the final one I've got is that is uh, what's the implications for dividend payout? Um, so, so we've we've got the dividend that we have already announced due in um, April. So that that uh, it continues, and obviously when we get around to August, um, we will re we will review this with uh, with the board, or ahead of that time we'll review it with the board. But obviously, you know, if we were to pay this out, then there are clearly implications for the dividend going forward. Um, not in a position to say what they are at this stage. All right, understood. Great. Thanks very much for that. Thank you. Your next question comes from John Deacon Bell from Citigroup. Please go ahead. My question was just around the tax deductibility of this. In the event that you have to pay the $268 million, is that tax deductible? And then if, if the interest was paid, is that tax deductible? So, uh, John, thanks for that. I'm going to hand over to Brent Kubis, who's here, obviously, with us, to hey, talk about that one. Hey, John. Um, we've actually got a ruling on this from the tax office um, in anticipation of this, and the, the interest part is the willful part isn't. Um, so, I mean, the, the claim part is not, not the willful portion. So about half is tax deductible in, a, in simple terms. Um, I guess the only good thing about this is any cash payments we've made in tax this year, we might get back a bit, so, uh, because that will reduce our tax payable this year significantly. Got it. Okay. Thanks for that, Brent. Thank you. Your next question comes from Sol Hedison from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Brent, and um, good morning, Dick. Brent, maybe maybe for you, just can you talk to what's happening in, in um, credit markets generally and, and what sort of all-in rate of interest are you looking at um, on this particular facility and I guess on also potentially any drawdown that you might need to cover cash flow over the next circa six months? Yeah, I mean, as you know, the, the markets are, are moving quite a lot, the spreads have moved out, but um, in all of our assumptions, we've been pretty conservative in the rate that we've used, um, and um, I, I'm quite comfortable. The interest impact is not huge um, on the, from the facility for, for this, um, and um, you know, we can easily cover that in, in our covenants and so forth. So. And maybe just a comment, are they, is it a mixture of fixed and floating rates there? Are they all no, are those, we, those rates locked in? We've just used floating at the moment. Um, we, we'll look at that down the track. I mean, I mean yeah, we've, obviously we'll continue to review our, our facilities and the, and the structure of those facilities to make sure they are you know, most appropriate and we optimise um, the rates sure. in, you know, in the market. And just last one, are you, are you in that position to potentially um, not pay out the the interim dividend, or is that, um, now that's been announced, do you, do you actually have to pay that out? Yeah, that interim dividend is committed. Okay. Thanks, guys. That's all I had. No problem. Thanks, all. Thank you. Once again, if you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. Your next question is from Sean Larman from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, Dick, good morning, Brent. Just a, a quick one from me. Uh, Dick, is there anything that you can tell us uh, overnight? I mean, updates probably pretty soon after, but any anecdotes or anything you can tell us with respect to the operating business um, overnight? No, no. Um, I've been a bit distracted this morning, so <laughs> with this, I haven't checked in on that. But look, you know, um, from a from a from a surgical perspective, no. But you know, look, Francis uh, closed um, schools and facilities overnight. Uh, so we're seeing a spread, which is sort of what we anticipated um, in terms of governments uh, directing people to, to stay at home. Okay. Got it. That, that's all I had. Thank you for that, Dick. Thank you. There are no further questions at this time. I will now hand back to Mr Howitt for closing remarks. Okay. Uh, we'll finish up there. Thank you all for uh, joining the call.